like to look at the end of Parshat Mishpatim. Parshat Mishpatim ends, Parakaftalad, with the experience that Kla Yisrael underwent in preparation for Mamad Har Sinai. And we find that in Source 1, Moshe Rabbeinu took the blood and threw it upon the people and he said, Behold the blood of the covenant that Hashem sealed with you concerning all these matters. Moshe, Aaron, Nadav, and and 70 of the elders of Israel ascended. These great Zikanim went up upon Har Sinai. They saw the God of Israel, and under his feet was the likeness of a sapphire brickwork, and it was like this essence of the heavenly, like the essence of the heaven impurity. They saw a livnat hasapir, ke'etzem hashamayim latohar. Now, obviously, when we look at something like this, a vision of Hashem, it's obviously something beyond our realm of understanding. That's clear. And as Rav Belsky in Israel points out, very similar to the vision of Yeshaya Hanavi, when he also sees Varet Hashem Yoshev Al Kisei Ram Venisa. However, if anything is found in the Chumash, it is meant for us to learn from. It is not meant to be just something esoteric for something for us to skip over. And if the Chumash describes that the vision that they saw, this is the way they understood what was under Kivyocho Kodesh Baruch Hu's Kisei HaKavot, was a Livnat HaSapir, then we need to understand what message does this have for our lives. And hence we have Rashi's understanding in two. Rashi says that the brickwork was in his presence at the time of the enslavement in order to recall the suffering of the Jewish people who were enslaved through brickwork. And Rashi further explains that they saw Ke'etzem HaShamayim LaTohar, an appearance of the heavens in their brilliance. For once they were redeemed, there was light and gladness before him. So we almost have two imageries here. The imagery of the brickwork, the imagery of the slavery, and the imagery of Ke'etzem HaShamayim LaTohar, the imagery of light, of radiance, the imagery of the redemption. But what is so fascinating, and this is where, Emir Tzashem, I'd like to put our focus today, is the question that Rav Belsky raises. He says, why were the bricks before Hashem made of sapphire and not of straw and mud, like those that had caused their suffering in Egypt? If indeed we're having two different, almost, experiences, the experience of the brickwork, which is the experience of the slavery, on one hand, and the experience of Ke'etzem HaShemayim LaTohar, this radiance, which is the redemption. So I would understand that the brick should be a brick of mud and clay, and yet on some level that this brick would then have this radiance which would represent, or some level of radiance that would represent the redemption. What is significance that the brick instead of being made of clay, of mortar, of what we would understand normally brick to be made of, that the Chumash Medavka details that the brick was made, the brick of sapphire. What is the significance of a brick at the same time, one and the same time being a brick, at the same time being sapphire? And it's to this question I'd like to address Amir Tzashem on two levels, and on the second level, two parts. Rav Belsky's answer I find very powerful and very compelling, and I think very pertinent for our lives. Explains Rav Belsky in Ene Yisrael, that the two most important events in source number three that constitute the character of Kla Yisrael, the two most major seminal events in our history, were clearly Yitziat Mitzrayim, the exodus from Egypt, and the Kabbalah Satora, Matan Torah, the experience of Pesach and Shavuos, as we celebrate today. However, he notes, the years our forefathers spent in Mitzrayim were not wasted years. The Shibud Mitzrayim, the actual time, the 210 years that we were actually working, is more or less overlooked. We focus in on the redemption, we focus in on what happens after the redemption, but the years of servitude, we, so to speak, just wash over very quickly. 
Notes Ravelsky again. These years were the Kur Habarzel, the iron furnace in which the tender soul of the Jewish people was forged and its character purified. Shibud Mitzrayim produced some of the most important and deepest impressions on Klal Yisrael. Our rabbis tell us the Gemara and Yavamos, Shlosha Simanim Yeshva Umazu. There are three characteristics that the Jewish people have. It's almost embedded in their genetic DNA that you know a Jew. They are Rachmanim, Baishanim, and Gomle Chasadim. Merciful, unassuming, and doers of kindness. These three elements form the basic characteristic of a Jew, forming the fundamental core of his personality. We have strong sensitivities to others. We are ones who are very careful about the plight of others. The Jewish ability to know another suffering is one subject mentioned in our parsha. We know the 